and uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for having me uh, today in uh, OWASP AppSec uh, event. So uh, today we are going to talk about application threat modeling tips and tricks. Uh, I will not cover the process to uh, perform application threat modeling, um, the methodology. You can refer to different standards, different methodologies to execute application threat modeling. We will just focus on some tips and tricks uh, that could be taken during a uh, number of stages of application uh, threat modeling. Okay, I'll try to go very quickly in the presentation. So we have some time at the end of the presentation for any questions. So if you have any question, please uh, drop it in the chat. Okay, so we are going to cover a number of steps and tracks. Uh, related to uh, some stages, we're talking about uh, uh, asset identification phase, threat modeling, scoping, uh, application whiteboarding, threat identification, and risk analysis and risk mitigations. So let's start by first uh, tab and track related to the selection of methodology. So there are a number of methodologies talking about how to implement application threat modeling, how to execute the process. Uh, each one has its, all, has its pros and cons. So the recommendations here is to understand every methodology, understand your requirements, the environment you have, and select what, which one is suitable for you. Number of methodologies could be used to execute application threat modeling as one-time activity during the design phase. Others maybe uh, could be utilized to be part of the, an ongoing process of application threat, model, threat modeling in your organization. Uh, DREAD, for example, could be used uh, for the risk analysis phase of threat modeling process. So uh, it's, it's good to have um, understanding for each methodology and to uh, try to understand exactly the requirement, the needs in your environments to select the suitable one for you. Great. Uh, next step related to uh, when to do application threat modeling. Number of frameworks talking about application threat modeling as part of the design or architecture phase. This could be Sigital Touchpoint, uh, Microsoft SDL. So they are mainly talking about during the design and architecture phase, you do application threat modeling, identify all possible or potential threats. And then uh, in the verification phase or testing phase, you go and ensure the recommended controls, the mitigations already taken or implemented during the development phase or implementation phase. So this is a standard way to do application threat modeling. You identify all possible threats and then uh, verify the implementation of the controls. <clears throat> However, based on uh, the, the environments in, you have, sometimes the application threat modeling is an ongoing process. That means you do application threat modeling for application, uh, identify number of threats, However, you still get some feedback, get some inputs from different security gates during other stages of life cycle that, that could be SAS, DAST, um, penetration testing, maybe threat intelligence, whatever uh, security gates or security controls you have, you may get some other uh, identification for extra threats that require some sort of uh, modeling and identification for the mitigations. So you can recommend and ensure those uh, mitigations already implemented at, and the application is uh, secured. So again, uh, threat modeling could be as standard way to do, to be in the design phase uh, uh, for your application, or you, you could kind of utilize them even in other stages. Sometimes the penetration testers, they do some sort of threat modeling for a specific, a specific function during the penetration testing. So to understand exactly the, um, the connection flow as a sequence here, so they can uh, expect there is some sort of uh, threats here that could be uh, exploited. Okay, perfect. Next, next section, we'll talk about some tips and tricks related to the scope. This is one of the most important topic today in uh, this uh, talk, uh, because um, the scope is very critical. Um, sometimes the application threat modeling scope will focus only uh, on the application layer. That means we're talking about some vulnerabilities in the source code, maybe to issues in the configurations for the application. So the recommendation usually to protect the application from attacks like OWASP top 10 or any similar uh, threats. So this is okay. However, uh, based on your scope, you may include other uh, combo other layers. You need to 
consider some threats to other layers. Maybe you need to consider some threats related to the infrastructure, the, the operating system, maybe to the virtualization if you have, maybe you have some sort of Docker images that managed by Kubernetes. So you, you need to identify some threats related to the other layers within your scope. At the end, those layers could be source for extra threats uh, that you may miss if your scope is just in the application layer. In general, if your scope will be just focusing on the application layer, the code, the integrations, back end, front end, other external entities, you need to be sure that within your organization, other uh, domains are other layers, uh, the threats or the risk for other layers already identified by other activities in the risk management process in the organization. This is an example, if you have managed service uh, for any uh, any type of managed service like uh, IaaS, PaaS, SaaS, whatever, uh, based on the type of service, you control or you manage part of the infrastructure. In, in this case, uh, the threats related to your scope, you have to identify, but the threats related to any component managed by the, the, the service provider, it is the responsibility for the service provider. However, uh, the business risk or the non-technical risks is still in your scope. Even if you have SaaS service, still some other non-technical threats could be identified, maybe something like compromising the, the cloud admin account, something like access management, something like other, other requirements. So uh, again, just focus on your scope. Ensure if, if, uh, if you exclude any layers, it's already uh, managed by other uh, risk management process or any other third party and never uh, forget to include include or identify business uh, risks or business threats uh, for non-technical issues. Great, so the next section for asset identification, okay? So as bear ISO standard, there are two types of info assets. We have primary assets and supporting assets. So the primary assets we're talking about business processes and information assets. There are a number of other supporting assets. The recommendations here, just focus on the primary assets. Don't waste your time to identify any other type or any other options for the, the supporting assets. Focus on your application, understand application objectives, go and break down the application services for each service, try to have the processes related to the each service, and then you can do some sort of mapping uh, between the application service and the information asset. We're talking about application threat modeling. So most of the assets will be related to the application layer, something like uh, user session ID, uh, some sort of um, uh, information asset for a specific data store you have, database or file server or whatever. So it depends on the functionality of your application. You need to identify all information assets in your uh, application, uh, some description, and maybe you add some asset value. Uh, you can use whatever framework to evaluate or evaluate the assets, maybe like CIA or any other uh, options for the asset calculating the asset value. It's, it's important to have the asset value because in the risk analysis phase, we will use the same input uh, to ensure we have um, uh, accurate risk analysis uh, process. So again, uh, you identify each information asset in your application, you map the information asset here to the application service. We have a registration service, we have some sort of uh, application function that provide specific application service. You need to break down all processes and for each process you map the information asset. Great. <clears throat> so the next uh, is application uh, whiteboarding or decomposition. Uh, before going to, to the, this section, let's talk about how to present your architecture for any application. There are a number of standards to write or the draw or uh, implement or document the, the ar architecture for any application. One of them is four plus one model that comes with five views, logical view, implementation view, use cases view, process and deployment view. Each one provides some information related logical view, mainly for functional requirements. Um, implementation view are talking about some uh, inputs, some information related to the developers or programmers, uh, the software components, how they should uh, integrate together. This is an example of implementation view. 
process view. This is important as well. It's provide details about the internal processes within your application components. Deployment view, again, the, uh, it's important as well. So we are talking about how the application is deployed within the infrastructure itself. And also uh, the, the deployment of the application on the same server uh, where you have some sort of directories here for file upload, you have some sort of X control required here for other for teachers. You may have some sort of layer of uh, virtualization or dockerization here. So you need to understand the deployment view from infrastructure perspective and from the same server perspective. Again, your understanding for such information is uh, important in order to identify actual the, the real applica application threats in the next phase for threats identification. The next view is, is the use case view. It's also important during the threats identification, we'll go through uh, 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 any, any discovering some potential threats related to the logical attacks. So it's very important to have the use cases and to think about some uh, of abuse cases for each use case. Again, this is the best model or best views that could be uh, documented in order for anyone, regardless of security, to understand the application functionality. Here, we are talking about, about pure application architecture. There is no security as uh, in this step. So uh, during the application threat modeling, you need to understand each of those views. You need to understand exactly how the application is uh, running, the implementation view, the deployment view, some uh, information about the use cases, the functionality in your application in order to identify the threats. So, if this information is not ready, there is no pure, uh, clear documentation for that, you are not able to uh, have those information. In this case, you need to whiteboard your architecture. So whiteboarding the architecture is an optional phase. If you have understanding through your application, you understand everything, especially if the application is small or, the, or you are doing some sort of threat modeling for only small change or minor change in the application, sometimes you understand exactly you have full visibility, understand everything. In this case, no need to have whiteboarding. If, if you feel you will, you will identify all possible threats without need to draw to the data flow diagram. Uh, our recommendations usually try to do data flow diagram as much as you can, uh, as long as you have some time and uh, the data flow diagram will give you more insights, more information about the application uh, architecture deployment, where this will help you to identify more threats. So uh, when you are going to whiteboard your application, there is no standard way to have data flow diagram. This could be the common way to draw um, the, the icons for data flow diagram. It's co compatible with Microsoft SDL notation. You can use some automated tools like Microsoft Threat Modeler, like Threadgile or any other tools, uh, or you can do that manually. Uh, using OWASP Thread Dragon, I highly recommend this tool, or any Microsoft Office tools or any other tools that could help you draw data flow diagram. Okay, so what are the tips and tricks here? The first is communication. Communication is the key. So during data flow diagram, you need to understand everything about the application, understand uh, everything about the, the application, and the way you could identify all threats. You will not miss any type of threat. Uh, in your application. You sometimes you collect some documentation, but most of the documentation could be outdated, maybe some uh, in the agile environment, you, you, you may miss some uh, important information in the available documents. So communication is important. For, for application threat modeling activity, you need to get some information from uh, business owners, from uh, design and architecture team, from the development team themselves. Uh, from the deployment, from the DevOps team. So try uh, to communicate with different stakeholders to have full visibility, full understanding for the application before starting the threats identification phase. Usually we start by uh, uh, collecting the documentation, try to have high level understanding, then schedule first uh, stage of interviews or meetings with number of stakeholders, draw data flow diagrams, uh, draw everything, understand the uh, mapping between each data flow diagram and the information assets, then schedule another meeting to confirm and ensure our understanding for the application. Perfect. Uh, other tips here related to how depth, how depth you need to go uh, during the data flow diagram process. Uh, 
this is an example of data flow diagram. You can find it in some tools. Uh, you can see here there is client, Angular JavaScript. There, is, there are a number of processes here. Uh, th this is OK as the high level data flow diagram. And this is OK also if you will understand everything about the application based on that. So data flow diagram in general, the activity, it should be any executed just to help you understand the application and identify threats. Uh, but sometimes it's recommended to dig deep in some processes and have some extra details. Uh, those details or those some uh, uh, some depth uh, could give you more understanding for the application component. For example, here we're talking about client using Angular JavaScript. This is client side code that may include some processes. Those should be identified in the client side. The same for authentication service. Authentication service, you need to have some details. How is the authentication is going? Uh, maybe there is some sort of OTB here, the integration with maybe other systems for Active Directory integration or, or external with how to manage the session management after the authentication. Some details is required here in, in, in order to ensure all threats against the authentication feature is considered. Uh, here is another example of high level threat modeling uh, data flow diagram. We're talking about application server, so service data store, very high level. Yes, this is an, another example, very high level. So web application data stores, background worker processes. Again, it's 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 okay as long as you you have enough information. Uh, to do threat identification, okay? So what? Uh, let's go on an example of what are, uh, other processes could be identified. This is an example of client-side code, whatever React, Angular, JavaScript, whatever uh, client-side code, uh, you need to identify, identify some internal processes within the client side. You are talking about a browser where most of data flow diagrams draw the browser like external entity and that is it, that's it if you have some client side code you need to do, go and draw the processes that could be implemented in the client side especially if if you have some integration uh, from the client side let's, let's have an, uh, this an example there is some sort of payment with maybe visa or mastercard in this case within the client side itself there is communication with the uh, back end to give to uh, maybe gather some information about the payment but the payment itself is from the browser to the payment gateway or Visa or MasterCard. So in this case, there are a number of threats could be identified in this step that require uh, more details in high level design or a data flow diagram in order to have full visibility, full understanding uh, before going to the threats identification phase. Uh, another step related to uh, the using of microservices in your environment. So whatever microservice uh, you the code application itself is implemented based on microservices uh, integrated with, with uh, API gateway or not. So usually if your application is built on microservices, the microservices will be the core of any uh, data flow related to any application service. So whatever <clears throat> application service, will utilize some processes from one or more microservice in, in your application. That's why if you are going to draw data flow diagram, you may you may uh, use the microservices as the core, and then based on the uh, environment, you, you maybe there, there is some sort of integration with API gateway, and uh, this could be the layer to integrate with some external entities. Most of the microservices, uh, sometimes actually is, is uh, linked with specific data store. You need to highlight those layers as well. So for each data flow diagram, you need to un uh, understand the processes in the client side, the communication with the back end. If, you are, if you're using microservices, identify microservices, make it the core uh, on the, in your data flow diagram where they, some processes will be uh, utilized based on specific uh, data flow for specific application service. One more thing related to some common, some uh, uh, some processes that could be uh, integrated with different processes in your data flow diagram, like logging, for example. In this case, you can make it easy just to have some sort of uh, vectors there where you collect uh, uh, the logs from different processes and communicate with external entity like SEM solution. 
So this is just some recommendations to draw data flow diagrams uh, for a different component in your application. It's not mandatory at all to go in such depth uh, to have data flow diagram. It's, it's just um, recommended in case you need to understand more about how the application is running. And then this will be very helpful if you, if you need to go the next step where you need to identify threads here, there, and there. It's very important to, uh, to understand everything. So if you can, without uh, do, uh, doing this detailed data flow diagram, it's okay. Uh, if you need to understand more, data flow diagram should, be, uh, should include some uh, uh, extra processes where you understand everything. In the next step, uh, you will find it more easy uh, to identify uh, some uh, threats, especially the logical attacks. <clears throat> As you can see, some inputs here come coming from the logical view, some from the processes view, and others from the deployment view. That's why the four plus model is, is important. Actually, you need to you need to, you don't need to use uh, four plus model. Any application architecture model will provide you with the required information uh, about the logical the processes in your application and the deployment and even the use cases. Other type of drawing uh, your, applica your application using call flow, connection flow, or sometimes called sequence flow. So, so in some cases, in some cases, uh, you need to have some sort of sequence flow for specific function. Uh, I, I cannot say this is mandatory for any application function. It depends in your understanding. If it's clear for you, based on data flow diagram that's that's okay in some cases oh, okay there is some sort of integration here with internal entity and there is some sort of payment going there and there is another one is integrated with some sort of user identification database and in from data flow diagram you still, still cannot understand can you guess how the sequence is going from the client and, uh, and back end server sometimes it's it's good good to have connection flow for specific function your application to understand more most of the penetration pen testers, they in during the penetration testing, they need to understand some sort of request response for a specific function. They draw some sort of very quickly a connection flow, so they can can identify some threats or some vulnerabilities could be exploitable. Another type is the logical flow or the logical steps for specific function. It's also one of the ways that you may use to draw some uh, functions to understand the logic. This is also important and we will go for the same steps here during the threats identification where, where, where you are going to identify some logical threats. Another steps for drawing data flow diagram, try to draw data flow diagram where uh, they will be understood by software developers or architecture team. Try to make it MVC model so they understand how these those are processes in the controller, those are in the model, maybe though in those in the views. Try to make it in layers. So those are the processes in the client side, those are the process for uh, shared services. Here there are some external entities, third parties. Try to make it easy for anyone to understand. Why it's, it's important to have in such case? Because data flow diagram, it should be reviewed with the development team or architecture team with other stakeholders in the environment. So it's very important to have that, this data flow diagram understood by them so they can highlight, okay, no, this, this process is not, we are, we are using another type of services here or another type of connections here. So also it's very important to have, uh, have the data flow diagram layered and easy to understood because in the future, during the any change in the application, you already have the you have identified all application services, processes, and data flow diagram for each application service. So in the future, in case there is any change, you can just ask the architecture team or any stakeholder in, in, in your organization, just please highlight which data flow is impacted in this change. So instead of doing threat modeling again for all, for all the application, you can, you can just focus on specific data flow diagram or specific feature in your application to threat model the, any application threats. And also it's, it's very helpful for the static analysis, dynamic analysis, penetration testing, whatever security gates you have to be just focusing on this change in your application. It's very important to have uh, the application threat modeling, or sorry, the application data flow diagram in a very easy way to understood by anyone in the environment. Great, so next uh, tip related to 
threats identification. Actually, this is the most يعني, challenging step in uh, threat modeling. Uh, you understand everything, understand the application components, the integrations, uh, the deployment, the what well, everything about your application. And then now it is the time to say where are the threats in your application. Sometimes you go, okay, I need to identify some threats. Let's have OWASP top 10. Let's have uh, whatever application th uh, threat library. And let's, okay, uh, there is possibility for SQL injection. There is possibility for whatever threat in your application. This way may be good, but you may miss many application specific threats. So uh, how to, uh, to go in this process? Our recommendation is to go in different directions. First, try to have the attack tree, understand the attack objective and understand the possible uh, attack objectives, threat objectives for your threat actors. Understand your threat actors, actually, first, this is important, and then try to draw attack tree for all possible or potential threats against your application. Then uh, uh, for each application or for each attack tree, try to have to try to use threat libraries, vulnerability libraries, even some mitigation or controls libraries that provide some controls against some threats so you can uh, uh, check the, those threats. So use threat libraries or vulnerability libraries after you identify the attack tree against your application. Then try to understand the use cases and for each use case, try to think about one or more abuse cases against your application. So you can use one of the attack trees. This example from the PASTA methodology uh, in the parent node here, this is the threat objective and the underlying nodes here, this is the target, the component in your application and subsequent layers here are the where you can use application threat libraries to build uh, all possible attacks, threats against your application. What are threat libraries that you can use or vulnerability libraries? OWASP comes with different projects that you can use. OWASP, ASVS, highly recommend it comes with too many threats like, or too many domains that you can discover or can you need to check. OWASP testing guide, different uh, uh, projects based on whatever type of application. However, even those doesn't include everything. So uh, some of the, 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 the frameworks or the libraries built from uh, attack perspective, like or Stride from uh, Microsoft, like whatever other methodology and others from defensive perspective. All of them are great. However, you need to identify the application specific uh, vulnerabilities or threats. This is another, another uh, example of a threat library. It's uh, from Autodesk continuous threat modeling. So they have different domains and for each domain, they identify some, uh, sorry, they identify some questions for each domain where you can try to answer those questions based on your understanding for data flow diagram and try to okay think about attack trees or attack vectors based on those domains. Microsoft comes with the stride methodology. Uh, stride is good, uh, but you need to understand what is stride. Stride is to identify some threats by classifying attack goals. That means it's more to attack categorization. Uh, but you cannot say Stride is threat library or a vulnerability library. So they define some, some uh, attack goals and they you can do some sort of mapping. Okay, I have data flow diagram. There is possibility for tampering here. But there is possibility for spoofing here. There is possibility for the drive service, maybe at some entry points here. here. So based on uh, your understanding, you just highlight which uh, uh, which area that, that include me some, some sort of threats based on Stride. Again, Stride, it, it's not threats library or vulnerability library that you can use just to have list of all threats against your application, but it's methodology that you can utilize during the uh, attack tree uh, identification or threats identification. Okay, so what are the tips here? First, build your own application specific threat library. There is no static list of threats each application based on the functionality, they, they may uh, come with uh, some custom threats that you need to identify based on the logic of your application. Uh, let's assume you have application that um, utilize uh, GPS location for authentication. For example, some HR applications is go going there, doing there, there now. So you just go to a specific place to authenticate with uh, the application. In this case, some sort of uh, GPS spoofing threats could be 
one of the threats against your application. You will not find something, it's GBS uh, spoofing in any of those libraries like OWASP, SDS, or in a standard. You may, some, you may find some categories related to authentication or uh, some details about some recommendation that maybe um, give you some insights about such threat. However, you need to understand the application functionality and based on the functionality, you identify application specific threat library. You can go threat, uh, through the same process uh, of attack trees and threat libraries after that. Uh, other inputs are uh, from the internal and, and external integrations, very important to understand the deployment and the integration model. So you, you understand every, or you identify possible threats or potential threats from internal and external integrations. Dependencies, third party libraries are important. For plus views, again, under, try to understand about the logic for application, try to understand the, the processes in your application, the deployment model, the other views, they, come, they may come with, with um, new threats that require some uh, analysis. DevOps tools, they have another threat, internal external threat intelligence. Threat intelligence is very important as well. Uh, threat intelligence from internal, that means from different internal analysis of threat modeling, threat intelligence feeds uh, based on some internal monitoring and uh, activities and also from the external. Those feeds may provide some sort of attack tree for specific actors they are targeting your uh, organization. So if you have such input, you may understand, okay, this attack uh, three or this actor, usually they are doing one, two, three, four. One of their uh, activities is to do some sort of, uh, try to attack uh, the application by this way. In this case, you may discover some threats that require some modeling, or uh, you may understand the way of specific attack vector, in, and then you focus to uh, add extra detection controls based on your understanding for the uh, threat actors. Threat intelligence is very, very important uh, source for threat modeling. The same for penetration testing, vulnerability assessment, whatever activity security gates in the organization, they may discover some threats extra. So if the threat modeling is an ongoing process, you may get some feeds from different uh, stages. Automated tools, um, some tools comes with threat analysis in automated way. Those I mean, uh, there, are, there are a number of tools there for, to, to make threat modeling like Microsoft's threat modeling, like uh, Threat Jai, like Threat Modeler. Uh, just take care about some false positives they provide and also be sure sometimes they will not discover some logical threats against your application. Don't miss non-technical threats. Uh, it, it depends on the scope. If, if your scope is just pure technical uh, threats, against your application, you just focus about that. But if, if your scope, you'll include other non-technical threats, then you need to identify those uh, tech non-technical, like segregation of duties, access control, like backup, redundancy, whatever, uh, non-technical issues in your application, those comes with uh, uh, some threats. They may impact uh, the application and, and you need to identify. Again, based on your scope, you may exclude some non-technical threats and that maybe those could be handled by other risk management activity in your organization. Perfect. So next step related to uh, identifying some flaws or threats against uh, be, uh, related to the design and the logical uh, issues in your application. So uh, there are a number of, of any references that you can use. There is book about avoiding the top 10 security design flow. They identify uh, like 10 domains that require some review during the threats identification. Some issues related to the, or some threats related to the design phase could be identified in the same way. Actually, there are a number of uh, references there. There is uh, securing software design is hard, which is like blog post. Uh, also, it comes with 13 uh, domains in related to the design issues that could be uh, reviewed uh, during the threats identification that may comes with extra threats that require some sort of extra mitigation against the application. Logical threats, most challenging uh, threats to, to, to be identified. Uh, logical threats, you, there are two types. We're talking about how to bypass uh, some enforcement of some of the business logic. And uh, this is some, something like, okay, so for specific fu functionality, there is a process to execute this functionality in your application. You need to go in this step and this step, and there is a requirement to do one, two, three, four before going to the next step. 
So you understand the logic for your application and then try to identify some issues, some uh, uh, yani logical issues to maybe bypass some steps, maybe you to execute extra, uh, add, add, add some sort of steps uh, extra to bypass some controls. Another type is to bypass security controls. Again, it's, uh, uh, implemented in your function or your, your logic of uh, your application. So if you need to do some uh, functionality like money transfer, you cannot do one, two, three, four, five. You, if you have some some uh, um, yani some parameters uh, or some uh, yani criteria, it's pro pro prohibited to do some sort of application functionality. So the security controls there, you understand those controls and try to bypass such cases. Focus on uh, authorizations. Focus on exposed uh, APIs in your application. Some any logical threats are are any challenging. Uh, try to list all use cases in your application, and for each use case, try to the, any list one or more abuse cases for each use case. This will help as well to discover some logical logical threats. Uh, using logical data flow or logical flow for your application, they may give you some insights about, okay, I can do some sort of skipping this step, I can do some logical threads here. So also it's maybe sometimes it's it's good to have some that logical flow for specific function in order to identify some logical threads. In the agile environment, uh, we have some tips here. Uh, executing threat modeling in the agile environment, uh, sometimes in the it, it will be executed based on the sprints. So we have sprint here that requires some changes. We do threat modeling for specific sprint. Uh, next, another sprint, we do an, again some threat modeling very quickly for this sprint. But during the release, after we, you, need, you need to go to the release, we discover, oh, we didn't the, the, do some sort of threat modeling to some, uh, some uh, integrations. Uh, issues. Some uh, sometimes we we do threat model for one sprint, uh, and uh, without understanding the design change based on previous uh, sprints. So the recommendations for agile environments uh, try to understand the design changes for um, during the sprint uh, during the previous sprints. Uh, uh, if you are going to execute threat modeling for your sprint. I mean, now you are doing threat modeling for a specific uh, sprint and uh, you, you don't just under focus on this sprint. Uh, try to understand the changes in, uh, uh, in the design in the previous uh, uh, sprints, okay? So you may do some sort of uh, threat modeling for the previous sprints in order to identify exactly all threats in your sprint. Uh, uh, threat modeling as a code is um, there are a number of tools they are trying to provide such features they comes with like api that you can uh, script and call those apis provide some scripts that will automatically draw data flow diagram and then they automatically analyze the threats provide some inputs also that could be uh, and using scripts script to parse and ensure that there is there are a number of uh, controls based on these uh, threats, uh, uh, based on those discovered threats. Uh, I cannot say they are matured enough uh, now to be integrated directly in your application. If your your DevOps is any you know, require some sort of automating even uh, threat modeling, try to have like POCs like to test those tools. I I, I expect they will have some limitation to identify some logical threats. You can use them as an ongoing process for DevOps or your pipeline. However, you may consider some manual uh, steps to identify some logic and some issues related to the design flows and so on. Okay, great. So next step. Uh, okay, so after you finished uh, the threats identification, you need to have the threat uh, traceability matrix. So why it's important to have those? Because don't just list all threats without understanding the attack tree, okay? It's very important to link, to link any threat with attack tree, with how this threat is impacting your application. There is possibility for uh, cross site scripting, for SQL injection. Don't just list them. Okay, this SQL injection we may impact your application in this way. This cross site scripting could be exploited by one, two, three, four. So it's, it's, high, it's highly recommend to understand the threat traceability matrix, who, how, where, and what. So in order to, uh, First, to identify threats 
uh, applicable on your application and also to recommend very uh, specific uh, controls is implementable and understood by the development team so it's very highly recommended actually to have such such uh, tra uh, threat uh, traceability metrics again uh, it's not a mandatory step at all uh, at the end our objective is to identify all threats uh, in in without missing any threat and in very quickly based on the agile environments we have now so any extra steps are required if they will add more threats if you see there is no need skip those steps and just go directly and list all possible threats perfect so the next tip and track related to understanding threat agent those are very important this is very important as well so if you don't understand the threat actors targeting your organization targeting your applications you you may miss some very important threats uh, uh, it's, it's very important to understand all possible or potential uh, threat uh, agents, maybe from internal insider attacks against your some infrastructure components. Maybe there is some exposed API there that could be utilized. Don't just say uh, our threat agents are uh, uh, authenticated user, uh, non-authenticated user, anonymous user, and, and that's, that's it. Think about some other uh, threat agents coming from integration with third parties with internal external entities based on access for different components related to your application. Again, it, each threat agent will come will come with extra threats that could be that should be identified. Uh, but don't list anything. So in in case there is some sort of a uh, threat agent that will not bring any more extra threats, just skip this or try to group some threat agents together. Uh, threat intelligence is very important as well to understand the threat actors against your applications, especially the to understand how they they attack or usually how they use their attack scenarios, how they ex exploit some uh, uh, application functionalities during their usual or their um, yeah, process for any threats, uh, for any uh, exploitation um, uh, scenarios. So it's important to understand that. Again, this is important to highlight some extra threats and also you may add extra detection controls in your application based on that. Great. So next step related to the risk analysis. I try to go very quickly. We have so maybe five minutes. Uh, risk analysis. And now we have everything about your application. Do you identify the risk analysis? Very quickly, it's important uh, to use whatever methodology, but you understand the, the perspective or the the how those methodology are implemented so in general we have some aspects in the risk analysis how we are going to uh, uh, do risk analysis whatever methodology you are using qualitative or quantitative quantitative maybe hybrid asset driven uh, vertical horizontal that means sometimes you do threat modeling based asset by asset i mean so i'll go to identify some information like application asset here this database for example and let's try to have all list of potential threats against this assets regardless of the application service or the business process so you can you you may go uh, asset by asset usually we go in the upper layer and identify application services processes and for at, for each process the related information assets this is very important uh, highly recommended actually to go and uh, identify uh, the services so th uh, this will help you uh, during the threat identification phase to build your attack tree not just based on asset by asset uh, propagation non propagation it depends on the threat modeling um, activity you are doing if it is part an ongoing process as part of the risk management you may propagate the risk analysis that propagation that means Okay, I have SQL injection here, the risk analysis, this is, for example, medium risk. And after some uh, activities, well, we have another threat related to like misconfiguration of database or access issues or whatever. That means uh, this will impact the, the previous identified threats and the SQL injection maybe becomes high or uh, critical. I don't recommend doing that if, if you need to finish very quickly. And if this is uh, executed in the design phase, just uh, go and identify threats, don't propagate to, to, to avoid wasting time. But if it's part of an ongoing process, you may propagate some uh, some risk analysis activities to ensure your risk analysis is accurate for different identified threats. Perfect. So we have now analysis. Uh, some methodologies that could be utilized here. Whatever methodology, it's not mandatory. Dread 
this is what I am using usually, the read methodology based likelihood and impact. Whatever methodology that based on likelihood and impact will give you the same where you can use to have the risk uh, levels. Perfect. So, okay. So the final step and the objective of threat modeling is to identif identify the required controls against your threats. So next section is going to, uh, we're going to talk, talk about some uh, threats mitigation tips and tricks. Before going on that, you need to understand the mitigation strategy in your, in your organization. Sometimes you, some based on some scenarios, based on some threat types, the required control cost and other and and staff uh, may this some some controls require some time to be implemented in the code. You may transfer the the uh, the mitigation to another another layer like web application firewall or even transfer the whole process to any third party. You may avoid some some parts. You may again so understand your. Uh, threats, understand your environment, understand the cost of the control, you may use the mitigation strategy in, in, your, in your organization to transfer or uh, avoid uh, instead of reducing the risk in your application. So let's very quickly go through some tips related to the, uh, the controls that you are going to recommend, try to make it practical and implementable, not just list all possible controls. Sometimes security guys Okay, I feel good if I have list of all controls in the application. Try to understand the application components, the, the development, the, the implementation view that we talked about in the beginning of the presentation to recommend something that is easy to implement as, and applicable in your application. Don't say, okay, there is SQL injection, you have to uh, use parameterized query. If your application is using some user input uh, to, to control the, the table name in the SQL query, there is no way to use parameterized query. I mean, try to provide some controls is related to application applicable, uh, implementable, understood by your development team or your uh, internal stakeholders. Understand the business requirement and the cost of the control. Again, cost that means time and maybe uh, maybe money. So understand exactly how to implement this code. Sometimes if you need to implement some controls, this will require some huge time. So instead of just going and recommend any control, understand the business, understand the cost, uh, try to provide, focus to provide controls within the application. Avoid as much as you can uh, to recommend the mitigation for any vulnerability or any threat based on extra controls in other layers, okay? Try to uh, implement the application in the way uh, they protect themselves. Uh, one control can protect against one or more risks. So sometimes you can okay, you, you recommend some sort of validation, try to have some sort of validation that protect against different uh, input validation related threats and so on. Uh, never forget detection con detective controls, okay? Sometimes we focus just only on uh, uh, preventive controls to avoid some attacks and, and uh, have some controls against those attacks. Never forget detection controls. This is very important. Uh, very important to have full visibility in your application. Try to recommend some uh, specific logs, logs to be taken from uh, some logical or some functional requirements and functional applications, uh, uh, functions in your applications. So for this transaction, I need some sort of logs. Those logs could be used by the monitoring team, the SOC team, to build some use cases in the uh, uh, in the SIM solution, for example, where they have full visibility about some uh, um, potential uh, uh, threats against your application in the production. So detection control is very, very important. OWASP logging cheat sheet and other, uh, there is OWASP app sensor projects, very, very important. Actually, they define some detection points that could be implemented in the new application inside the application code itself. So a number of response actions could be taken based on those detection points. This, those are very important as well. Microsoft threat modeling tool mitigations, they provide some sort of uh, library for that could be utilized to uh, identify some domains or uh, controls. Actually, they have some domains for each domain. There are a number of uh, controls that could be uh, used. Again, this is good uh, as 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 uh, like source for such uh, controls in your application. Okay, last thing we finished now threat modeling. We identified all assets at the business services. We do threat identification, threat analysis, and everything. Uh, recommended or controls. So uh, I need to add a last 
slide here. I know we have pretty limited time. So uh, about some uh, very important topic related to the skills required to do application threat modeling. This is usually uh, the question that we face during any uh, application threat modeling exercise. Uh, as you can see, it's mixed mix between some information, some skills that require to understand the application component, the application deployment model, DevOps, maybe you need to have some understanding for the entire application software development lifecycle, and also require some security skills. Uh, I highly recommend PASTA methodology. PASTA, they have RACI metrics. With these RACI metrics, they identify some roles in your application in development life cycle. And for each role, there is specific requirement that they can provide. So uh, it, it's actually, it's mixed between some development and understanding for your environment from application perspective, and also some skills related to security. Uh, so again, RACI metrics is good. And in general, you need to, to have skills from uh, both even uh, developer with with uh, with security background or security from the security team with where he understand exactly the internal application and the environment in your development uh, environment okay sorry i have uh, <laughs> a very tight time uh, so this is all tips and tricks 10 of 10 we finished uh, all tips and tricks please if you have any questions please let me know